<laughs> and hey, we're, we're live. live. We're live right now. <laughs> oh, that can't be good. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in a hotel still because thank you, uh, Hurricane Nicole. Yeah, there's well, no flooding or anything here, and I, we haven't lost electric or anything. So Bob, I think Bob lost some electricity earlier in the day for just a few minutes, if I remember. No, no, it was Susan Sullivan that was telling me that. I had messaged her about something, check it on, see how she was doing. Because Susan and Bob both live in that same area of Florida. Oh, I didn't know And that. I was messaging her and, and I said, just check it on, see if you're okay. And she said they, that she lost power for just a few minutes. And, um, but then she, she was fine. By the way, those of you out there, if you don't know Susan Sullivan, you absolutely should get to know Susan Sullivan. Uh, she's been a, a, a frequent guest on Fox Business News. Uh, she's, her brand is the Small Business Network. Yeah, get to know her, follow her, anything you can do because she's a sharp lady. And she, you can find contact information on the endorsements. Oh, yeah. uh, she has a slide on one of the endorsements. And Diane shears on and Teresa Staples. Hey, Teresa, I'm still in Florida. Hi, ladies. Teresa lives right near me. Um, so up, up in New Hampshire or where you are right now? New Hampshire. Yeah, there's three of us that live in New Hampshire. She's one of them. Okay. Yeah. This <laughs> <laughs> I thought New Hampshire had four people. I got something. To oh, you. well, you know, I'm out of the state now, so I don't count. So, <laughs> Instead of right. two is what you're saying. <laughs> hey, did you see that awesome thing? I get to go to New York. I did. Lisa, congratulations on that. That is huge. Yay. It, you know, when, when, when your company that. that you do most of your work with recognizes how good you are and, and they want they want to bring you in for your opinion, that is huge. So congratulations. That's a big deal. Thank you. That's awesome. And I haven't uh, been for a long time. Um, I thought my my ship of that doing that had sailed. Well, <laughs> yeah, you never know, I guess. You hey, I see know. Debbie and Peg and Di Diane's there again. Great. Oh, there's Peg. Hey, hey, hey. So, um, hey, I wanted to, <laughs> you know, I've been watching her old stuff because I'm, I'm, I, I, uh, obsessed. But anyway, here is the, uh, so I said on that trip around the country, remember that whole thing mm -hmm. when we were on add value to life. And right. what I said on the show was it was the big trip was 29 seminars in 39 days is what I said on the show. Guess how right. much it really was. <laughs> how many? 39 seminars in 90 days. That's and still a lot, I, you know. I drove, it's, it's more, right? The thing that was crazy was I did the schedule myself, which was a bad idea. I didn't give myself enough time I, to sleep and drive it most of the time. The one I remember is from uh, the Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, down to um, Boise. I didn't give myself enough hours to sleep and make it. Right. So I didn't sleep. <laughs> Well, I can't sleep unless I'm driving. You know, I've been in cars with people before on trips, and I want to let some. I get tired. I want to let somebody else drive. Then I can't sleep. And the reason is I don't trust anyone else's driving. But I know that I am a good driver. So when I get behind the wheel, I can fall right to sleep. I'm very comfortable okay. doing that. Note to self: Jeff is not driving on any. Of these. <laughs> True story. One time I was I was in a multi level marketing. Uh, company and I had worked all day at my job that was near Atlanta, Georgia. I drove to Montgomery, Alabama, which was a three hour drive to do a meeting and then drove back to, to Atlanta on the drive back. I got so tired and it was, I remember it was January or February. It was winter. And I, I got so tired. I pulled over and I pulled right in front of one of those big light posts, you know, the, in, in a, in a rest area. And I, and I pulled in front of the light post. So it's, be well lit, but I left the car on so the heater would be running. I just kind of laid back for a little bit. All of a sudden, I woke up and I didn't remember pulling up. I just woke up and saw that light post in front of me, and I oh. slammed on my brake, which I was stopped. <laughs> but I slammed on my brake, almost broke the brake pedal, and oh, I, my heart went. Whoa! It was it was uh, it was a moment. <laughs> I probably said a word or two like "darn" or "golly," but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> no, I had a strict, 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 strict rule in the truck is because I was by myself. If I got tired, I had a, a futon in the back. So I would pull off in the, and go to sleep in the back because I could kill a bunch of people if I <laughs> hit somebody in that truck. Well, so. I was in a little Audi. Uh, I can't remember. No, a Quantum. I was in a Quantum, which was kind of the, the cheaper version of an Audi back then. And there was no 
room for a futon. It was just me in the car. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. So on that trip, by the way, a couple of the things I thought you might find interesting, I actually, um, even though I was earning six figures at that point, I decided I wanted to, this to be, um, and the reason I tell these stories is because a lot of people are doing things like this or mm -hmm. could do things like this. Okay. So I wanted that um, not to suck money off my other part of my income. Right. I wanted that to be generating its own separate money. So I wasn't going to finance stuff from it. It had to pay for itself. So right. in order to make sure I most earned the most profit, I spent 12 nights sleeping in the back and didn't get a hotel. <laughs> you know what? You were a business person. You did what you felt like was the right choice. And, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Uh, it's just funny because, um, of course, I slept in a Walmart parking lot sometimes and there was a flap between the bat, the box and the cab. So mm -hmm. you could come through without going outside. And sometimes I would pop through the flap and get in the front seat and I look like I'd been rolled in a street fight and they'd be Jane and little Joey going into Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> and they're looking at me like, what the hell? Well. I won't tell you how I know this particular bit of information, but I will tell you that I know this particular bit of information. You actually can drive overnight and get to a hotel about four or five o'clock in the morning and say, look, I got here in town a lot early. Can I just go ahead and just get my room for today? And they'll say, sure, if they've got an opening. And then you oh. get your room at five o'clock in the morning and you sleep the rest of that day. You go do what you got to do. Then you come back and sleep That's that night. It. You get two nights sleep for Ooh. one day's rent. Whoa. I won't say I, how I know that particular story. I won't say what I was doing at the time. Right? Yeah, Kim says dad gum. That's information I dad gum could have used earlier. <laughs> <laughs> dad I love you, Kim. Gum. Thank you for saying dad gum. It made me feel happy. So dad gum. <laughs> yeah. And what was the other? Okay, so um I sold 1100 tickets uh, in 26 states. So I didn't hit all the states. Right. And that was it. That was that was exciting. I'd forgotten about it mostly until Robert brought it up. How could you forget about that? I don't know. I want to do some more crazy stuff like that because at the time that was kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, as, as this book gets going and, and, and known, and I really do expect this book is going to be a, a sharp, I expect good things out of this. Uh, we'll probably have some things where we need to do events and go speak at places and but I'm not going to stay in a daggum van. <laughs> well, no, no. And, and I don't do Motel 6 anymore either, by the way. I, no, no, I've graduated to Motel 8. <laughs> what? The, oh, yeah, JP's like, JP's there's talking. nothing nothing wrong with Motel 6, he says. No, That's I, true, I, JP, I, but... But if you I, pay two extra dollars, you get the super eight. So, <laughs> oh, that's cute. To it, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I've had my fill of that. It's usually the other people. It's like driving. I was telling the kid, driving by itself is not that hard. It's those dang other people. And Motel Six is the same thing. The yeah. actual building and stuff's pretty good. It's them dang other people that are staying there. The, there used to be those commercials for Motel Six. It was Tom Bodette. I'll Great leave the light voice. on. Yeah, I'll yeah. leave the light on for you. But they, he had, there was one that was on TV, and you could hear his voice, and he said, this is your your average hotel, no, your your five-star hotel when you're asleep, and it was a black screen. Said, this is a Motel <laughs> 6 when you're asleep, and it was a black screen. He said, we'll leave the light on for you. That's <laughs> cute. I can, I can see you doing that that voiceover. I could, I could play that. You know, there was a when he would do it, there was a little – guitar song and it have a it had a fiddle and a guitar and Tom Bodette would talk and I could do that back when I played guitar more often. I had an interesting thing happen today. We haven't really got to talk much about it. I did my part of the recording for the book. Uh, for those of you who don't know we're, we're we're also doing an audio version of the book. We've got the ebook, the Kindle version's already out. The paperback's ready and it will be available to you on November 25th that morning. For, and it'll be special pricing then, so it's going to be much, it's going to be like four dollars cheaper than what it would be otherwise. Uh, but anyway, uh, but today I did the rec did my part of the recording for the audio book, and so I went into a studio here in Denton, Texas, and I um, recorded my part. There's part that I do, there's part that Lisa does, and so it's going to be going back and forth. But that was a real experience. I enjoyed that a lot. Oh, that's neat. I was so glad you had them take pictures. Yeah, I posted one, I think, in the group. If I didn't, I will. But I think I did already. You did, I, you did. I posted them a couple yeah. of places. 
So, yeah, Debbie but, Britt said uh, she's come to love an inside door, inside a hallway. She's got some standards for her. Amen, <laughs> Debbie. If somebody can come in, if somebody can knock on my door from the outside, I don't want to stay there anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, we've all got some standards now, right? What's this, the old saying about, you know, I can't do brain surgery, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn Express. Now, I don't know if the Holiday Inn Express <laughs> is like the Holiday Inn was, but it had outside doors. So. Oh yeah, and I don't know about that either. I, I'm I try to stay in the same uh, family of things because I have the loyalty card. Oh, and by the way, when everything shut down, they didn't uh, make me go down to the bottom of the pile. I still had privileges when I went out. <laughs> there you go. There, there you, you go. go. There you, you go. You know, you should have privileges. You're the lady with the blue hair. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I, when I think back about the last year, year and a half, I start, I really start going, wow, this has kind of been an unusual journey. You know, uh, from we were doing the Go Givers Success Alliance calls and, and, and you had the blue hair and you were a little embarrassed about it, start talking about it and said, this is why I did it. And you said that. And I told you that day how great of a book title that would be. And then, uh, heck, here we are a year plus later. You... We got a book. Well, you brought it up a couple times, and then I didn't. You know, I sat there thinking, I wonder how how do I have to ask him, or how how does he get <laughs> right? I should have said something, but I didn't know you were sitting there thinking we were really should do it. I guess no, I was from the very beginning thinking that would make a. I didn't know where the book would go, and when when I first said that to you, I just said that would be an excellent book title. Like we were in that Go Giver Success Alliance call this week, and. Uh, one of the people in there said something about oh, their. Bob oh, said that? about a book. Yeah. Yeah, but yes. but he said it. One of the guys had said something, and he says, "I'm, I'm getting back to being me, or something like that." And Bob said that would be a great book title, and it would. But it's like said the lady with the blue hair. I, as soon as you said it, I thought, "Heck, that'd be a great book title." I, I had no idea where we would take it, and uh, I did think we've taken it. Go ahead. Yeah. Did you see yourself uh, doing the book with me at the beginning? I, I, not necessarily me doing it, but that you should do it. And then as um, as time went on and I started thinking about my new business model that I really want to do, where I was spending almost all of my time writing, then I, when, when I was trying to make that focus happen and I was deciding on people to reach out to, you were the very first person I thought about reaching out to because I loved the idea of that being a title. But also, uh, I mean, I got, as I got to know you, I, I felt like you you had some pretty good things going on. You may be a little crazy, but you know what? I am too. My granddaughter tells me, she said, Gray Gray, that's my grandfather name. Gray Gray, you're Cray Cray. And I go, yes, I am. What, what can I say, say? <laughs> I can't really say a whole lot about that. It's like, oh, that's pretty uh, good. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry again. Hey, for those of you that it just says on my end, Facebook user, and you're saying hello, hello back. I have no clue who some of you are, but I will go back and answer each one of you before it's over, I promise. Uh, Kim wants to know, did you mess up when talking while making the audio? I no, bet you Kim, didn't. I did every word absolutely perfect. What are you talking about? Oh, God. It was it was hilarious. Oh, you and had I, to keep stopping? No, that's good. But what When you're recording an audio of anything, video is a little bit different animal because... You can make edits in video, but you better have different cameras going because you have to have a different angle. Like in my sales course, survival skills for commission salespeople and insurance, mm -hmm. as I was doing the intro videos on that, if I had an edit I needed to make, audio, it's easy. I, I can cut and, and do the audio edits very easily, but you can't do that with video because you'll have a jump in the screen. Okay. And so if you, for those of you that are ever taking my free courses that lead into that sales course, when you saw pictures of like the horse or the pond, that was because I had to do an edit. I didn't want you to see the video jump. <laughs> but when it comes to editing the audio, that's easy. As long as as long as long when you mess up, you know, you, you give your, give a little pause and then you go back to a, a reasonable place to start. It's a piece of cake to do that. And what, um, what I've got the guy in the audio studio doing is he's literally, I, I, he's, we recorded everything that I do in the book today. That was, took me about two, little, between two and two and a half hours. And he'll make one file that way. Then Lisa, when you finish yours, he's going to take your file and he's going to make sure that our levels match. So the volume's the same and the sound quality is the same. And he's going to give it back to me and then I'll, I'll turn it into the audio book. So, but yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's a good thing to do. I had never been into audio books that much 
until the last six, eight months, something like that. And I started, I believe it was when uh, Bob and Kathy, uh, Bob Berg and Kathy Tejadel were recommending uh, that Michael Singer book to us uh, in our group. Are you there? I've frozen up on you, haven't I? One of us is frozen up. I have no idea if I'm still here or if Lisa's still here. I think Lisa's gone and now it's just me. <laughs> this may not be a good thing, folks. I'm still, it says I'm still alive, so I'm going to keep going. But anyway, I'll tell you the rest of that story. Uh, she's coming back on. There you are. <laughs> you, 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 you froze up and then you went away. So oh. I'm assuming that it still said I was live and I kept talking and Oh, yammering. Lisa froze. Lisa froze. Oh, and I thought you all froze and I didn't. <laughs> Now, Lisa, you, you froze. You froze up. You're a professional. I don't want to talk about what we're going to do when I'm recording now that we all decided I can freeze up. Yeah, You're, you're going to be fine. Yeah. We, we do the recording part for you. Uh, I'll, I'll be online with you. You'll be fine. Uh, this is a new thing for Lisa, guys. I've done books before and all that. Not audio books. I need my but, handheld. Uh, this though. is all new to Lisa. So yeah, this is going to be great. JP wouldn't hold my hand either. No one wants to hold my hand lately. But JP. I know. He wouldn't. He said no. <laughs> <laughs> JP, get your rear end over there and hold her hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. I need someone to hold my hand right now. That's what I need. Okay. No, Kim hey, Debbie, said, uh, let us know. Is Lisa coming through fine now? You can oh, you do it, Lisa. Diane. Yeah, oh, Diane, okay. thank you for the pep talk. Yeah, no, uh, Kim says, when I saw your post, I was worried about you messing up when you did the recording. It's not him you got to worry about. He's the voice. He's the man. It's me you got to <laughs> I've done this before, but I'm still, um, you know what it is? I want to I wanna honor your words. It wasn't my words. It's your words. And if I, I want to, I want to make you proud. I'm always going to be proud. This is so new to you. I'm not worried about that. You just go out and do the thing. And, and, and as we've talked about before, when we're talking behind the scenes, just remember, you're not reading a book. You're telling a story and make it, make it you and just tell the story and I'll be there with you. So it'll be fine. When you said last time that actually helped, you said, read it like you were reading it to Alex. Alex was sitting there. That sure. helped. Cause I remember doing that a lot, a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, Thanks, oh, Sandy. Kim says, I'm not worried about either of you. It will be fun to hear. Thank well, I've you. done mine, and, and quite frankly, there's never been an audio book done as well as I'm just kidding. I, I, I couldn't say that. By the no. way, if those of you that like audio books, I have to tell you, I have become a big fan of Michael Connolly, and uh, he does the Lincoln Lawyer series and the Harry Bosch series. And Titus Welliver, the actor who plays Harry Bosch on the Amazon Prime series, he there are several of the books by Michael Connolly that are related to Harry Bosch that he narrates. The guy's tremendous. He Every voice he does, I mean, when he's doing the narration, he's one voice. When he does the Harry Bosch voice, he's a little different. When he does uh, voices, or even female voices or male voices, wow. it's a, there's enough difference in it that you can tell. And the guy's an incredible talent. I, I would like to wow. just go meet the guy someday. He's that good. And his hair is whiter than mine, and there are not many that can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you're the one that said Arctic Fox. I'm loving that. I think that's awesome. <laughs> that's a can of worms. I probably shouldn't have. Up. Okay, we got to get into the rule. Hang yes, on, let me sir. Pull my notes. Okay. Yes, sir. The rule. Uh, let's see if I left. We left anything out of the the thing. Okay, we did. The, okay, I talked a little bit about that. <laughs> By the way, the paperback will be out the uh, midnight on November 25th or so. Thanksgiving night into to Black Friday morning. Yay. That's when it's supposed to go live. You can order the paperbacks then. And also, uh, the, the price is going to be uh, $18.95 at that point. It'll go back up to $22.95 after the fact. We're, we're trying to work out a little bit better pricing, but I'm going to say $22.95 just to be safe. So that's a big savings you'll have on Black Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all the way through Cyber Monday. So uh, don't forget that. Please help spread the word accordingly. We're up. We're getting more ratings and more reviews as each week goes on. Oh, by the way, this week's winner is Donna Stott on here. I know Debbie's on. Donna Yay. Stott, uh, you won uh, the Amazon review drawing this week. Debbie, you know, you have you already gotten a, a review on there? I think you have actually. So never mind. Okay, uh, but um, Donna Stott won this week's uh, a drawing for uh, the review. So uh, Donna, I will send you a coffee mug. Um, bulk orders for your team. If you're a sales leader, if you order at least 25 books for your leaders on your team 
At that point, you're going to be invited to a special event that Lisa and I will do this just for people who have done that. If you order at least 50 books for your team, uh, we're going to do a special personalized event just for you and your team. So remember that. Okay, getting into the tonight's real business. We, we're about 10 minutes behind. we got to hurry. Okay, uh, tonight's rule, rule number six of the seven rules for success in direct sales, by the way, wrapped in a wonderful lesson for life, I have to admit. So, uh, today's rule is rule number six, the rising tide rule. A rising tide lifts all boats. Lisa, you're on. What does that rule mean to you today? That rule means to me is... Um, as I was building my business, I have heard so many other leaders, uh, not just our company, any any company, they their strategy is not to help anybody that they're not getting paid on. Their strategy is just to help their own personal people that they uh, benefit from financially. And the rule is because it's not just being nice. It is a business move to help anybody. Because on my 40-year window, which I obviously was a wee infant when I started, but... Um, third grade. Third, third grade. grade. <laughs> um, I've had people lately sign up to be on my team that I met 25 years ago in an audience at a seminar that they weren't in my downline at that time. And when they wanted to come back to Avon 20 years later, I was the one they remembered. So it makes sense to help everybody all the time because a rising tide lifts all boats. When you help somebody else, even if you think it doesn't help you at that moment, it still helps everybody because it all lifts everybody up. I just think that it's, it's a smart business move too. It's not just me being uh, nice. It's a smart business move to help anybody all the time. It is. And everybody that does what we do or what you do, that does it better, even if it's just because of something you said, some kind of encouragement, everybody who does it a little bit better, it actually gives all of you a better reputation. And it's, yes. it's, it's, it's just huge. I know in the, the, my Aflac career, before I became at the level, before I earned the level where I was up kind of higher in the ranks as a state sales coordinator, even regional sales coordinator, I would go in at, to different meetings as a district coordinator. And sometimes I would be the one they, they were having talk about things. And it was about helping everybody because anything that we do that raises the level of, of professionalism or, or success or ethics, whatever it might be, it's, it's, it's huge for everybody. It's providing that value that goes above and beyond the, the actual transaction of what you do for a living. And, I personally, I mean, I, I, I believe in a higher power. You know that about me, but they, uh, uh, even if you only, if you believe in karma or if you don't believe in anything, but you just know, Hey, if I do good, things tend to happen back that are good. It's all the right thing. Uh, and so I, I, when you, when we were first talking about the book and we were kind of visiting about the different lessons, when that was something that was important to you, it, that meant a lot to me because it kind of, it tells a little bit about the kind of person you are and about how you viewed it. And, I won't tell the story here that you were telling me at the time, but you were telling me a story about someone who didn't see it that way. And I was just thinking, how could anyone not be willing to help? It's not like it hurts your team if you're helping someone else, but it's just like you said, if you're saying things that raise the level of the group, that rising tide, it's going to help all of you. It's, it's just a tremendous thing. That's one of the, my favorite things about the book, quite frankly. I, I think it's, um, funny when I, I get I get heat for helping other people that are not on my team. I get heat for having relationships cross ways instead of, you know what I mean? Right. And um, it's funny because then later when I wanted to do projects with the other people, I already had relationships with everybody. So like that view from the top book series that I was known for for years, I was able to get 63 of the top leaders and maybe five of them are in my downline. The rest of them were not. But that right. wouldn't have happened if I didn't feel the way I do about helping or talking to anybody. Right. So it's not just, I, I guess I want to make sure everybody realizes it's not just being a nice person. It's, it's a business also move. a business move. It's also smart business to right. raise everybody up with you. Well, it's like the thing you do with send out cards. For those of you that don't necessarily know, Lisa 
does a tremendous amount of work in the in the, with a company called Send Out Cards. They're a great company, and I remember the very first. Uh, thing that that I ever did with you, Lisa. We, I, you had me as a guest on your your show, your Monday Morning Madness show, and, and then afterwards you sent the send out cards and a uh, brownie and all that. And, and it was just the fact that you would do that once was huge, but you do that consistently, and you do it multiple times. And it's just one of those things that you're doing that means something to people, and that that's not necessarily about business advice, but it's the same mentality. You're giving more than you have to, and you you're it's there's a principle that I have taught for a long time now uh, talking about that, how to make a business relationship work is by being focused on how can you provide more value than the actual transaction would dictate. And if you can consistently do that, and it doesn't have to be things that cost you money, but if you can consistently provide more in value than what the actual transaction would dictate, what you're going to find is you develop a loyalty with people that's not normal. Uh, I get tickled uh, every now and then I'll run into the person who in the Houston area is now the equivalent <laughs> position of what I had at the time. And he, he, he will say things to me. He says, man, he said, your people, you've been gone eight years. Your people still love you. And it's because of those things like that, where you're doing something extra and the, the what you're doing in the, in the, the rising tide rule is you're not just doing it extra for your team. You're doing it extra for other people as well. And it's, it's, it's huge. And it says a whole lot about the, the character that you have. And I, I've always appreciated that about you. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I like it when you like stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got, we have three minutes left. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> We've talked about this other stuff enough. I am going, I, I, I'm going to quit talking about that. Uh, I always talk about it then how you can help promote the book. Please, please, please share this in, in your circle. If you've got sales leaders, you know, talk to them about it, uh, about, especially about the special events we'll do for sales leaders that are ordering for their teams. Uh, just keep promoting it. Uh, Amazon reviews are huge. If you haven't had a chance, I saw Debbie posted something. They go, thank you, Debbie. I, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, if you haven't done a review yet, please get on Amazon. It, it doesn't have to be more than a few sentences. But if, if you've bought the book already, especially if you bought the book on the Kindle version, they'll have you in their system. Uh, but uh, we, we certainly want you to know how much we appreciate it, how much those reviews really mean. Uh, a friend of mine today, excuse me, I'm about to call. I'm going to mute my call. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Uh, well, maybe I should mute it this way. <laughs> <laughs> that coffee must be good that, this, that time <laughs> <laughs> this time okay, of night. This time of night. They figured it out by this point. It's not always coffee, all right? But, <laughs> but a, a friend of mine was posting something today. He, he has a book that's been released. And, and I'll tell you that I'm, his book is called Morbid Thoughts um, and Their uh, Domino Effect by a guy named Perry Muse. He and I went to high school together, and he's, his book is out. And the Amazon reviews played a factor. Now he's being featured in USA Today. Wow. So, so anything like that, it always helps promote the book. Uh, but uh, and by the way, if you, if you want to check online, P-E-R-R-Y-M-U-S-A, Perry Muse, good, good guy. Uh, we were both musicians together in high school. And then we both went that way in college, different colleges. But anyway. And but, we do have a couple uh, shows coming up. We've got a good show with, um, is it? Oh, the brand show with Doug Crow. Yeah, the author note, your brand with author Doug your Crow. Brand. We're doing that on Tuesday, right? I believe it. And then Chai mm. Time. Um, yeah. yeah. And then Ch Chai and Time is Chai Time Friday, 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 a week right? from Friday. Yeah. So a week from yeah. a week from tomorrow, but not a week from next Friday, because a week from next Friday is the day after Thanksgiving, right? So right. The, the week from tomorrow. <laughs> I don't even know. Don't go but, by anything I say because. <laughs> I've we'll been post right. it in the group. I've been, the, yeah, away. <laughs> uh, Doug's, Doug's show, I believe, will be recorded and then rebroadcast. And oh. then, um, but I could be wrong. But Harjeet's is live, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And Harjeet, uh, Doug and Harjeet both, uh, to tell you guys, this, if uh, one of the best things you can do in, in kind of elevating your career success is to find good people to listen to. Uh, now, when I was... Uh, I was about to say growing up, but when I was growing up in my career in sales, I would get tapes and recordings from people like Bob Bird, Brian Tracy, um, the Tom Hopkins. I would I would buy their cassettes. That's how old I am. I would buy their cassettes, but I would listen to them in the car because I got a huge amount of learning from that. And I had to invest in all those. 
now you, you've really got such great things. You can go to podcasts like crazy. Doug Crow, C-R-O-W-E, has a show called Author Your Brand. His guests are always interesting. Uh, and Harjeet Rathur, R-A-T-H-O-U-R. She has a show called Chai Time with Harjeet Rathur. She's a real estate agent in New York. She's tremendous. She's a great person. Uh, it's a great show. And she, as a matter of fact, she's doing one live tomorrow that's a big, that like the, if I don't remember the exact thing, so please forgive me if I say this wrong, but she's promoting uh, her, her guest is like one of the very top people with EXP Realty. She's huge. And anyway, but we're going to be on Harjeet's show next week as well. So, uh, yeah, just, Pe Peg said, I'm a huge fan of Zig Ziglar. That's true. Have you uh, seen Zig in person by chance? I have. Oh, I, I saw oh. him in person, I guess, nice. probably three or four times over my early career. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, a couple of times when I was in a multi-level marketing thing that had a big pin in Charlotte, North Carolina. And, and you uh, said you liked uh, Ogmandino, too. I like him, too. Yeah, Ogmandino, I, uh, that wasn't the first sales book I read, but it was the first one I fell in love with. The first sales book I ever read was an old book called How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling by a guy named Frank Betcher, B-E-T-T-G-E-R, -E -T -T -E or maybe it's just one T. Anyway, uh, great book, but uh, Ogmandito's greatest salesman in the world is when I fell in love with fables, and that's oh. why I like writing them so much today. It's, 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 it's huge. John David Mann is my absolute favorite fable writer, and in my opinion, he's a better storyteller even than Ogmandino was, but uh, I just I, I love the genre. Pen, yeah, I, I, think Penny, we, I think we've got a good one. Penny says uh, she uh, something about the squirrel didn't have her squirrel and was trying to comment. See, I didn't have my little squirrel. See, everybody misses the squirrel. I Except, don't miss the squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't miss the squirrel. <laughs> okay, I'll wrap up by telling you this. I, JP brought me on. It was Hagrid's. Hagrid's. Hagrid. Hagrid. Hagrid's. Hagrid's. Hagrid. The motorcycle thing. I thought it was going to be like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. <laughs> it uh -huh. was a it was a roller coaster, and I was on a motorcycle on a roller coaster. Uh huh. I'm still by shaking. I was, I, 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 I was like. <laughs> by the way, the actor who played Hagrid in the Harry Bo Harry Potter series yes. was an actor named Robbie Coltrane. He also played in a couple of James Bond movies with. Oh, uh, and I know um, you like James Bond. I saw that. I in love Ohio. James Bond movies. Oh, yeah. that's uh, nice. I can't remember. I think guess he played in some with Pierce Brosnan, but he was a hundred pounds heavier than me. But a lot of people said that in real life, he looked a little bit like me. And, it, and actually, when I saw him in a movie, he did. He oh. was heavier. But thank God somebody is heavier. But, uh, <laughs> and with whiter hair. If you guys have seen the post of my picture from the recording studio, the light behind me, it was kind of a dark room, the light behind me, my hair looks as white as Santa Claus in that thing. And I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, you're that old. The older I get, the younger you are anyway. Well, the, uh, right. I, I, the, what, there's an old saying. It says, the hurrier I get. No, the hurrier the I go, the behinder I get. <laughs> but there's got to be some old thing in there, too. The older I get, the, oh, I don't know. Anyway, we're, we're over time anyway. Okay, okay. So, yeah, you stay there for a minute, Will, please. <laughs> All right, I will. And everybody, we'll, we'll see you next Thursday at the normal time. And then the Thursday after that is Thanksgiving. We probably won't do an episode then, but the book goes out at midnight on Thanksgiving night or in the Friday morning. So exciting. You don't really know how, what you call that. Anyway. Countdown, countdown, countdown. Tell everybody you know and buy, yeah. buy like copies for your family and your friends. <laughs> and all that. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody.